Hello everybody and welcome back to Space Engineers, where today we are going to indulge ourselves, indulge, in, I don't know, indulge ourselves with some space elevator things and stuff. Because I'm ready for a new challenge. And this challenge is uh, more difficult than you may think. So, space elevators. Simple enough to understand. A space elevator is a platform which connects the ground with the upper atmosphere and allows um, passage of cargo, people, whatever you need between point A and point B. The plan I have is I want to be able to make one without it requiring any kind of fuel. So it's all just battery powered. It doesn't need any hydrogen. It just just battery power and it can work passively have some solar panels and all that and uh, you'll have to let me know but my thought process is once I've got the design worked out which I'm gonna have a little mini series going on this is the first episode we are going to actually create a survival world and try to build it so it's not just gonna be a creative thing it's actually gonna be a uh, I'm gonna have to design it for survivability in to be in mind I don't know. But that's that's my uh, thought process so far. So if that's something you think is going to be cool, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Helps me out more than you think it does. But yes, so today we're going to show off a load of different designs I've got in terms of being able to actually make a space elevator in terms of the elevator part. So the first one I've got is simple enough. It requires just thrusters. And you go up and you go down. Now you can sort of see if I use the gyros and wiggle around a bit. It's using the landing gear to stay within this part. You can sort of see no matter what. I can't really get out of it. Like if I really try. I can't. So it just means that like you know. You could set up a script just to set the thrusters to full speed. And then fall down and and the event controller at a certain height to uh, start and stop it. So that's that's one idea. Very, very simple. Downside of this is obviously you're using thrusters, which means it's a lot of power. You know, you're going to be using a lot more power than some other designs. Um, I also created an iteration two, which used double the amount. So it's basically stacked on top of each other. And if I do this, you can sort of see it's a little bit better. So I see if I wiggle it side to side, I've got a little bit less space, and it and it works. Now you may be thinking, oh, but you can use panels, right? So if I shove some panels on here, let's shove some panels on all of these parts uh, right here. So that, what that's doing is adding, you know, like a tenth of a block more thickness. Obviously, it's adding more blocks to be able to build. And as you can see, I can't actually get up here now. Doesn't doesn't work. Okay. So let's delete half of them. Let's let's break off these ones here. What about now? Can I wiggle in my space my way into this? Nope. It's just, it's just too big. It seems like the collisions are weird, but then it's also a case of it just doesn't, it doesn't like it. And obviously it still has a negative of, like I said, using a lot of power. So that's design number one. And if I haven't made it clear, I would like you to, you guys to leave me a comment down below. Tell me which design you think you like the best. So that's design one. Okay, so the second design is uh, using a pinion or oh, a cog and a a line of teeth so we're using a cog and a line of teeth and uh the, the idea is you know as the rotor spins these makeshift cogs they'll ride up the wall so if we do something like that you can sort of see it half works 
you can see the idea is there. However, it's not very stable, it's not very fast, and when you try and go down at any greater speed, it breaks itself. So, this was a cool design that... This is idea two, and I could go with this, however, I'd have to do a lot more work. The pros are, it looks cool, you know, it's a very fun kind of uh, mechanism, you know, it's a good challenge. The cons are, it's very unstable in this design, obviously what I could do is double up like how I did here, so it'd be a bit more stable. Um, the other problem is it hasn't got any strength laterally, lat laterally just horizontally. Uh, so a design like this could come better, where you have one on each side hooked in. Um, so this is design two. And yeah, so you have to let me know. Do you like design one, design two, or will you like design three or design four? So let's move on to design three. Okay, so this is design three, and it uses wheels. So it's as simple as you hold W to go up, all the way as fast as you need. Like that. All the way to the top. And then, you know, when you want to go down, you can go all the way down. Simple enough. And uh, I've done something fairly unique with this one. I've decided to, or I was messing about. I've got a event controller somewhere. Where did I put the event controller? Here. So I've got an event controller, which way is it facing? This way. Which uh, detects a certain distance, so when it's 60 meters above it, it'll activate the parking bricks. And that is just a really cool thing you could do, so you know, you could have, be sending it as fast as you want up, and then at a certain distance it will lock the brakes, which means it locks at the perfect height. And then when it comes down you can do that. And that's a fun way of using the event controller. Um, so that's one of the pros. Second pro, very, very fast. You can get up to speed very quickly. You can stop at any point you want up here because we have enough friction. So if I was to, uh, you know, come here and I press P, you can see completely locked, very, very stable. You can see the platform that you're sitting on, very, very stable. So it's a, overall a really nice design. It's not very big. It only requires a singular block for a pillar. You can see, very, very nice idea. However, it also has cons. The cons for this design is, as you can see, it can rotate. Because we're using, in this case, a round uh, rod, like pillar, uh, the wheels, because they can't be precisely in the centre, have the freedom of completely wrapping around. Now, sure, it is slightly reduced if you use the square blocks. However, this can still happen because the wheels can have uh, suspension and all that. So maybe a design where you have two or three of these, or even four, all together is a better idea, but you know. The other con is it's a very, very simple design, and uh, doesn't really, it's not very difficult. The hardest part is you can't get any materials up to be able to build, so you'd have to work that one out. But yeah, that's basically design three. That is the pros and the cons of that particular design. Um, and then we move on to our fourth design. Now, this is what I would class as being like an inchworm design. So it requires, you know, connectors to be placed periodically on the pillar. And then you have a uh, set of piston or a piston or multiple pistons and then some connectors. And then either a timer block or, you know, some kind of logic which uh, goes through a repeating process. In this case, the process should be uh, this connector or this connector connects, this connector disconnects, the piston either retracts or it stands. And then once it's, oh, I guess I can show you. So that's process one, as you can see. And then from there, the process would be uh, this one connects, this one disconnects, and the piston extends. And it'll just inch its way up each of the stages. So it go whoop, and then that would retract, and then it go whoop, and then that would retract, and it go whoop, and it would just slowly climb up. 
obviously it has a negative of not being very fast. It's also quite jerky with just a single piston in this design. And it also has a neg of a downside, and I don't actually know how to fix this. I guess I need some kind of subgrid, maybe. Um, as you can see here, although these two connectors are right next to each other, I can't switch lock them. So that's a bit weird, So which basically means if I try to press the button again, it's just going to fall. Like that. So maybe what I need to do is... To t Detach that from that and put one of these on here. And then we need to get it back and attach it like, oh, I guess like that. And then we need to make sure this is locked. And I, this is all, I haven't actually tested this. This might fix it, this might not. Alright, so we do something like that, and now this becomes the connector button. Whoops. And then in the set of actions, it's just all, it's very simple, it's all just one thing. And then we switch lock on there. And then we reverse that like that. So this was design one. Let's try something like this. Maybe Maybe something like this might work better. But obviously this has the pros of being, you know, quite compact. It uses logic, so it's quite repeatable, easy to build. Um, a fun challenge, as you can see. It's not immediately easy to just use. Uh, hmm. It appears to also not be connecting here. Why is it not connecting like that? Oi. Connect. Okay, so if I start it like that, it should work. Right, so if I click that, it should go up. Okay. And then if I go like that, it'll go up. Hmm. Okay, so that, that locks into place. You want to switch lock on the top one. Oops. Come on. Okay, so we'll get that. You click the button. It moves up. And it's ready to connect. Click the button. It moves up. Good. It's a bit better. Now it does have a downside of I've set this up in a way so it's, you know, it's being exactly the amount of blocks it needs to be. So it's seven or oh, seven point four meters net in this case. It wants probably wants to be seven point five. Um but either way you have the distance of this head which isn't taken into account on top of all that. Um it it just the the main problem where that comes in is right at this point here. Obviously this is going to be even more extreme but if you look at this Let's say the top of this part of the connector lines up with the bottom part of the inner ring. If I go over here, you can see the top part of this connector lines up about well, a good, you know, couple of inches away from the top of that ring. And that's purely because of that distance there. And it just, it, you know, when you go up lots of blocks, it's just going to actually go extreme. You know, times that by 10 is an entire block sort of thing um but yeah this this is another really good design which or you know concept obviously this isn't an amazing design but it's a concept um you could also do it in small grid which i was messing around for a little bit but it couldn't get to work and uh 
like I've talked about, you have the benefit of if you wanted to, you could have another set of uh, connectors on the other side, which would be connected to this part, which means it would always be moving up no matter what. There's a lot of fun things we can mess about with here, but yeah, this was just a short video. One to talk about, hey, this is the next project I want to get be getting on with. And two, which design do you think I should go forward throughout? You you were you guys are the ones who can pick this. Um so we've got design one using uh, just you know thrusters, really boring but simple. Idea two using some makeshift cogs on some uh, gear teeth which run up the sides in some way or another. Now this is a fun technical design, but it will have its issues and its drawbacks and it'll be harder to do. You have this design, which is design three, which uses the wheels. Uh, like like I said, very easy to use the wheels. Obviously, it's a bit complex to design how we do it. Uh, very power efficient. It has a negative of spinning, which so it'd be you know you'd have to work out something to overcome. Or we have design four, which is what I call the uh, inchworm. Um, and again, really fun technical build. Lots of different challenges to be had in this particular design. Um, but yeah, it's entirely up to you. So, option one, option two, option three, or option four. But that is where I'm going to end today's video. So, hopefully you did enjoy this video. And I look forward to finding out what you guys want me to build for the following or for the future videos. As always, my name is Bean Quantum Chief. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye. Wow.